Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is of great significance to have this press conference on International Human Rights Day. But it is unfortunate that today also marks 891 days of persecution of the al Qazaz family, a Canadian family, by Egyptian authorities. My sister, Canadian citizen, Toronto-born Sarah Atiyah, has stood here twice on this exact podium before to advocate for her husband's freedom. Khaled al Qazaz, a Canadian permanent resident and father of four Canadian children, was illegally detained by the Egyptian military in July 2013 and held for 558 days in solitary confinement without charge and with no reason being provided for his lengthy incarceration. Sara, her four children, and thousands of Canadians spoke up and called for the former government's intervention. With the help of Canada, Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, and many human rights organizations across the world, as well as the United Nations, Khaled was finally released in January 2015 by order of the Egyptian Prosecutor General. As a result of the brutal conditions of this confinement, Khaled sustained multiple medical complications that require prompt attention. His injuries remain untreated in Egypt. Sara and her four children traveled to Egypt shortly after Khaled was released to accompany him home to Canada. Khaled's admission into a Canadian hospital, hospital awaited him. Sara and Khaled's plans was to return after two weeks. Much to their dismay, however, for the past 10 months, they have been prevented from leaving Egypt. Instead of allowing the family to return home to Canada, Egyptian authorities have instead retaliated against Sara. Sara was detained with her children at the Cairo airport twice without legal justification, and a travel ban was recently issued against her husband Khaled without cause. Sara's savings, which were intended to cover Khaled's medical surgery, were confiscated, and the government has ordered the closure of Sara's bank accounts. Even more severely, Egyptian authorities have continued to delay granting Sara an Egyptian visa extension, a requirement for any Canadian residing in Egypt. Sara is now in legal limbo in Egypt, as she cannot leave the country without this Egyptian visa. These impositions have been ongoing for months. Throughout this time, the family in Toronto has remained patient and hopeful that this matter will be resolved. However, this waiting has been to no avail. The safety of my sister, her husband, and most importantly, their four children, ages nine, seven, five, and three, one boy and three girls, has forced me to come speak here today. The situation in Egypt continues to worsen. Global Affairs Canada has issued a travel advisory informing Canadians to avoid all non-essential travel to Egypt due to the unpredictable security situation. Last week's World Squash Tournament, which was due to be held in Cairo, was cancelled after 11 teams, including the Canadian, American and British teams, declined to travel to Cairo because of lack of security. Sara and Khaled's supporters have launched a website, emailyourmp.ca, to allow Canadians to share their concerns with their members of Parliament. Within the last two weeks, over 1,000 Canadians from Nova Scotia to British Columbia have emailed over 135 members of parliament across the country calling on them to speak to the right honorable prime minister and the honorable minister Stefan Dion to request their personal intervention. The safety of my sister Sara Atiyah, my nephew and nieces and my brother-in-law Khaled are seriously at risk. This is a Canadian family being persecuted in Egypt. I urge the Canadian government, and I pray each day 
that we can bring our, our family home to enjoy Christmas with us. I would now like to welcome the Honorable Senator Mubina Jafar, who has stood by my family and my sister, Sarah Atiyah, from the beginning to offer some final remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. I came to know Sarah a number of years ago when she came on Parliament Hill. And what really impressed me about Sarah is that she was not looking for one day headline. All she was looking for was to bring her husband home. Sarah over the last two few years has worked quietly to bring her husband home. And now she has gone to Egypt to try and bring her husband home. And all we are asking is that the Prime Minister intervene and bring Sarah and the children home for Christmas. We will now answer any questions. Do you think, well, you're, the main goal here for you is, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but to put pressure, diplomatic pressure, on the Egyptian government, essentially. That's what you want. Correct. I'm here today to call on the Egyptian for their goodwill and uh, to allow this family to return home. There is no uh, charge, there is no investigation, there are no reasons for such actions against this family. And we're here to also call on the Kenyan government to help with this, with this, with this ordeal uh, and to speak with the Egyptian government to help this family come home. How do you, how do you explain that this, this situation this ordeal is, 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 has been lasting for, for almost a year now. How, how do you explain that? Unfortunately, the most difficult thing about this ordeal is that we have no reasons. Neither Sara and Khaled or their lawyers or the Canadian ambassador have been able to receive answers from any authority in Egypt. And so we continue to deal with the situation without knowing why and when the Egyptian government will allow them to leave. Please go ahead. Um, to add to what you've said, uh, for the last, uh, uh, since this has happened, I personally have worked with the, uh, the Egyptian ambassador, uh, and I have also let our, our present prime minister know about the situation. That what you are asking is what we are also confused is, why are, like they have been to the airport twice, and they were stopped for traveling, from traveling. Now Sarah's uh, Egyptian visa, visitor's visa has been denied. Normally what used to happen is that uh, whenever Sarah's Egyptian visa expired, the, the Egyptian government would extend the visa. Now her visa has expired, which puts her in a terrible situation. She's not even legally there. The Canadian ambassador and the Canadian office in Cairo have been very helpful. But unfortunately, that has not been enough. And so has the Egyptian ambassador to Canada be always been available for us to speak to him and also has been very helpful. That's why we don't know why there is uh, Sarah and her family are not coming home. Just, just to make sure about their current situation, uh, they, they are both Canadian permanent residents? No, Sarah was born in Toronto. Sarah is a Canadian. Her four children are Canadian. Her husband is a permanent resident. Thank you. Français? Oui, je parle. J'essaie. Oui, ben essayons. Alors, <laughs> <laughs> uh, qu'est-ce que vous souhaitez de la part du gouvernement? Moi souhaite que notre premier ministre, il, il, il va téléphoner le président Sisi et a demandé que notre la famille de, de la famille canadienne il va il va il va retourner à, au Canada ça c'est notre ça, ça, notre souhait ce que, ce que vous dites c'est que ce n'est pas un, un, un manque de volonté de la part du gouvernement canadien euh, mais l'incompréhension de la situation par le gouvernement égyptien oui c'est vrai ça c'est vrai ça c'est la chose c'est c'est vraiment difficile pourquoi le gouvernement égyptien a dit non pour, pour Khalid, pour voyager ici au Canada? Parce que la, 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 la foyer, la, la, la place pour Khalid maintenant ici à Toronto. Ça, c'est notre souhait avec, euh, à notre premier ministre. Ça, c'est vraiment important que cette famille, euh, il va retourner au Canada. Je, je, je vais vous poser la question en français, mais... 
il y a des gens, évidemment, qui voient aujourd'hui au Canada ce qui se passe. On, on va accueillir à bras ouverts des réfugiés, par exemple, de la Syrie. Euh, et il y a d'autres gens qui, comme vous, sans être compte, évidemment, ce, ce, ce geste que pose le Canada, euh, qui semblent dire, écoutez, euh, oublions pas ce genre de situation qui se vit euh, oui. comme ça, oui. ou encore euh, d'autres euh, cas qui reste en suspens. Euh, c'est un peu ça aussi votre message aujourd'hui? Oui, oui, c'est vrai. Moi, euh, j'ai voyagé souvent à, en Turquie, à, 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 à Liban, en Liban. Donc, euh, pour moi, c'est important que les réfugiés de Syrie aussi arrive ici. Mais, mais il y a le ça, c'est la chose différente. Parce que Khalid et Sarah n'est pas réfugiés. Euh, Sarah, elle est canadienne. Et la chose que je dis est aide la Cana euh, une femme canadienne qui, qui est maintenant qui est à, qui est à Cairo. Ça, c'est la situation complètement différente parce que Sarah, elle est canadienne. Merci. If you may allow, uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Nadia Abu Zahra, a university professor at the University of Ottawa and a friend of Sarah Khalid's when we were at University of Toronto as students uh, to, to, to give some remarks. Thank you. So as I am a university professor, but I would like to speak in my capacity as a parent of two young children. I very strongly relate to these two parents of four young children. I, I feel their concern when they are worried all summer as to when the children will be able to start back up at school, when they'll be able to see their friends again in Toronto. I have very strong and grave concerns about the effects that this has on the very four, very young four children. I am only a very few number of years older than this couple. They're a very young couple with very young children, and they're too young to have to live through an ordeal like this. These, <clears throat> this family is, is a committed Canadian family who grew up in very similar circumstances to myself. So we grew up in neighboring communities, we went to the same university, we studied similar subjects, and we had similar ambitions in life. And I now know that my two children are living in safety, right close to the parliament buildings as we speak, and my daughter is in school, and she's very happy in school. And yet I know that someone so close in life experiences to myself is not having the same experience. And I, as a Canadian, feel quite responsible. I feel that we Canadians in Canada need to make sure that Canadians everywhere are safe. And this family is not safe. They're far from safe. And every minute that goes by, they get into more and more danger. And so I feel deeply committed to do everything I can in my power. And I know that many other Canadians will feel the same way, including Canadians in Parliament. Oui, je suis désolé, j'ai de, de commencé en anglais, mais je suis... Qu'est-ce qui vous trouble? Ce que trouble moi, ce que me, me trouble pendant les nuits, quand je voudrais dormir et je trouve que c'est difficile à dormir, et qu'est-ce qui va se passer avec sa, cette famille? Parce que chaque minute, c'est une, minu une minute de danger. Et ça, ça reste sur ma, ma conscience que ça peut être ma responsabilité de ne pas faire suffisamment. Parce que j'habite à Ottawa, je suis à côté de, de, du Parlement et je ne fais pas suffisamment, euh, je n'ai pas des efforts suffisamment pour cette famille à, à revenir. Il faut parler avec tous les membres du Parlement parce que je comprends et je suis sûre que chaque personne qui comprend exactement ce que cette famille a survécu va va avoir une action, va faire quelque chose. C'est seulement une question de compréhension, c'est seulement une question qui va, qui va entendre l'histoire de cette famille. Parce qu'au au même moment qu'on entend l'histoire de cette famille, on sait exactement qu'est-ce qu'on que, qu qu doit faire comme Canadien. Est-ce que vous leur avez parlé récemment? Si j'ai parlé avec la famille, j'ai parlé avec la famille. Et ils ont peur. Ils ont peur parce que 
parce qu'ils ont survécu quelque chose de très difficile. Et ils ne peuvent pas expliquer tout ce qui, qui s'est passé parce qu'ils sont encore en Égypte. C'est dangereux même seulement d'expliquer. Et pour la famille, de parler avec le média, par exemple, c'est dangereux. Alors, euh, j'ai parlé avec eux, mais, mais, mais pas les, les, les médias. Que, et je, je, je repose un petit peu la question, mais qu'est-ce que vous souhaitez de la part du gouvernement canadien? Un appel, une lettre, quelque chose que notre sénateur peut euh, envoyer, quelque chose de facile de laisser cette famille libre de revenir à, chez eux au Canada. Ce n'est pas si difficile. Ce n'est pas si difficile, mais c'est une question des priorités. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui veulent que cette famille rev revienne ici tout, tout de suite. Et le, notre gouvernement à ce moment et le gouvernement en avant, les deux ont travaillé pour ce euh, bout. Mais c'est une question de priorité. Il y a plein de choses à faire tout en même temps. Euh, les, les femmes disparues, les, <rire> les réfugiés, il y a plein de choses à faire tout en même temps. Mais ça, une, ça doit être une priorité. Parce que c'est quelque chose, on a besoin seulement de quelque chose de très petit. Et la famille peut revenir. Alors, ce n'est pas une grande chose. I have sent notes to the Prime Minister. I have spoken to his office. They are aware. And uh, I have raised uh, the issue with the Prime Minister's office and, and, and to others that this is a very important issue. Uh, basically, uh, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking in the following way. Firstly, Khalid's medical situation is very, very precarious. And every day that he does not get treated, um, uh, his health is deteriorating. The second thing is, uh, I have just returned from that region and have spoken to many people, even people from, from Egypt. The situation in Egypt is deteriorating. And the fact that The three of us are standing here today is a very serious matter. We, we have been quiet, we've been working quietly because this is a very big step we're taking. It could hurt, it could hurt Sarah and her family. And so, uh, and the third thing is what you just heard, the children are out of school. These are Canadian children and this is a Canadian family. And we have kept quiet. We have not uh, raised this issue publicly earlier because we were very respectful of the Prime Minister having many, many issues to deal with. But now we believe that before Christmas, this family deserves to come home. Can you explain on what basis uh, he was detained in, in Egypt? Khaled Al-Qazaz and Sarah Atiyah moved to Egypt in 2005 to open an education, to start an educational project, a school that reflected Canadian values in education. Post-revolution in Egypt, where the whole world celebrated for that transition to democracy, Khaled became more interested in bringing the democratic values that he experienced here in Canada to Egypt and became active with the Freedom and Justice Party. Because of his leadership and his experience internationally and in Canada, President Morsi invited him to join as a staffer in his presidency. Uh, and he was responsible for the human rights file, the women's rights file, and he was the liaison with foreign embassies. On the day of the military coup in Egypt, President Morsi was detained with nine uh, advisors and staff, one of which was Khaled al-Qazaz on July 3rd, 2013, which in fact was his birthday when his four children and Sarah were waiting at home with a cake and presents, and he never showed. And for five months, They had no idea where he was, and then the ordeal continued and continued. But that was the reason. And, and Khaled, in the year and a half of solitary confinement, he was never charged, he was never provided any accusations, and he was released by the Prosecutor General's office, cleared, his file was closed with no investigations remaining. 
In some ways, it's uh, not similar, but we, we've had a case. No, Zara Kazami was not Egypt. I'm sorry. I'm getting it mixed up. But do you think the Canadian government has to call in the Egyptian ambassador and, and talk to the ambassador about what needs to be done next? Or maybe that's been done already? I'm not sure. The Egyptian ambassador has been uh, actively working on this. He's very concerned. He's been very supportive. The Canadian ambassador in Egypt has given this extreme amount of effort, has been very active on this file, very concerned about Sarah and Khaled and the four children. Um, and so uh, we believe that we have reached a stage in this ordeal where it requires a higher level of intervention uh, to allow them to come home safely. Thank you. Senator, would you like to take a picture through the bus and the gap? Why don't you, Senator? No, no, please, please.